What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel Pete's Carport and today we're going to be working on the newest car to the channel and that is this 1984 Porsche 944. It was a car that I really really wanted. I dreamed of always having a Porsche and I can't be more excited to get this thing on the road and driving really nice. So today we're going to do some regular maintenance items that I like to do to all vehicles I get. So I typically will change out transmission fluid and differential fluid as well as oil and coolant. Today what we're going to do is change out transaxle fluid because this Porsche has a transmission that's located in the rear and attached to the differential. So all we got to do is drain out one fluid and it's quite a bit of fluid. So let's go step inside and talk about what we need to do and what we need to do this job. Since it's so hot outside, let's step into the office and take a look at the manual, which is cool that I've got this. So um, there's a lot of debate online which oils to use, so we're going to talk about that right now. Let's flip to this page here because uh, there is a debate on checking the level. Now, I saw online somebody said an inch below your uh, filler which I thought was absolutely insane because any car I've ever done, you fill it till it kind of comes seeps out a little bit and you know you're full. Now the car needs to be level, of course. So I don't know if they were referring to a non-level car, but it says here when the car is standing on level ground, it should be to the edge of the filler neck. So in my opinion, that is basically right up to the top. So that's kind of where we're going to go. Now, how much fluid goes in it and how does it work? So you've got manual transmission here, uh, 2.75 quarts. So I've got three quarts is what I picked up, uh, or 2.6 liters. And uh, it says here, SAE 80, and it's got a couple other things, the API GL4. And if you look at the Lucas that I picked up, the great thing about it is it is uh, shows here that it exceeds service levels of API GL4, GL5. So it looks like it's gonna be completely fine for us. This is the 80W90 that I'm gonna go with. Because I'm in Florida, the temperatures are extreme. According to what I was able to find on research online, the 80W90 is better in hotter temperatures, whereas the 75W90 uh, can be better in colder temperatures. Also, it could depend on if you have a limited slip differential, which I do not, uh, versus a standard. So those are kind of things you're gonna wanna look into. I'm just gonna go with this. But if you're questioning what you should go with, definitely search online and figure out exactly which one's best for your application. So besides needing about three quarts of fluid on hand, I wanted to uh, degrease down the filler and drain plug because they were pretty nasty so that I can fit in my 17 millimeter hex head. So you're gonna need one of these as well. That's gonna allow you to take off the filler, which you wanna do first, and then remove your drain plug. To add the fluid back in, I've got here something I've been using for quite some time. This is a Harbor Freight fluid filler, and uh, it was probably a couple bucks. It drops into a bottle that I made kind of in, out of a Gatorade bottle because this top fit directly on it. So I pour this fluid into here, and then I pump it into the uh, transaxle in this case. So let's go ahead and get set up. Uh, also, from what I've been able to find, there's no differential fluid since this uh, transmission is set up in the rear, so it's a completely different setup. Uh, and the automatic, I believe there is differential fluid. So do some research on that as well. But we're going to be just doing our transaxle fluid today. Now, of course, you want to prop your vehicle up and make sure it is very safe. I am not a huge fan of jack stands, especially with what just currently happened to Harbor Freight with a lot of them failing. And I have those jack stands. So I've kind of been sticking with just the ramps here. And what I do is I set them up in the front and the rear so the car can't roll forward or backwards. This vehicle here does not have a working e-brake. So I want to be very, very careful. This car does not roll and fall off. So I've set it up so that it's kind of fail proof safe. Now, we can enter the back area here and easily access our fill and drain plug on our transaxle. So I wanted to point that out first and I'm going to go ahead and show you guys where you need to drain it from. Okay, so we're going to slide up under the vehicle from the rear here. And right here is our transaxle. So this is the uh, bolt here that's going to be for the uh, fill and this is going to be for the drain. You always want to make sure this one comes out first because if this one doesn't come out, you're gonna be stuck with no fluid and you don't want that. So we're gonna first remove this and also it will allow air to enter in this to flow faster. Typically you wanna have the engine warm, but because I don't have a working e-brake right now, I don't wanna start the engine up and have anything happen with this rolling off these ramps. So we're gonna play it safe. 
We're gonna let it drain for quite some time and then we're gonna go back to filling. So I went ahead and slid a drain pan in place. Uh, grab the breaker bar, that's one thing I forgot to mention. Uh, you don't have to have a breaker bar, but it makes life a lot easier when taking this off. And we're just gonna go ahead and set it up here and remove our filler bolt. So that came off nice and easy. I can already feel it loosening up, so that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and take the rest of the way off. And once we get our filler plug out here, we wanna take a look at it and see if there's any metal shavings attached to it. And it looks really good. And now that we have our filler bolt out, we can take our drain bolt out. And that came off pretty easy, so I'm gonna take that out the rest of the way, and we're gonna let it drain for quite some time. Now, once we pull our drain bolt out, we're gonna to wanna to take a look at that and make sure there's no metal shavings, because usually these have magnets, and uh, I'm not seeing anything on there that looks bad, so that is good news. Fluid doesn't look terrible, so that's good news. And I'm just gonna let that drain, and then we're gonna go ahead and move on to filling. So once all the fluid is drained out, we're gonna tighten it back up. Torque spec is 30 foot pounds that I found online, so we're gonna go with that. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this down, torque it. I'm gonna show you how we fill up through the top there, and then we're gonna tighten that down and torque it. A heads up, I went ahead and really degreased and cleaned out the bolt, and then we're gonna degrease and clean down our entire transaxle once we get everything back in here. So let's go ahead and do the next step. So moving on to filling it, we've got our bottle filled as high as we can, which is not a quart. So we're going to have to fill it quite a few times. And we're just going to stick this end into our fill hole. And all you do is pump and you'll start seeing the fluid make its way into the hose line like that and up into the transaxle. So you just got to keep doing this until you reach the point where you see something slightly dribble. I'll show you guys that. Then we're going to put our uh, fill bolt back in and we should be good. Okay, you guys can see there, there's a slight dribble down. I went real slow at the end because I knew that I was right around 2.75 quarts total in here. I had about a quarter of a quart left out of my three. So the shop manual seems to be very, very spot on on how much goes in there. Now all I'm gonna do is tighten up the uh, fill cap or fill bolt up there and we should be good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and clean the transaxle off camera just because I want it to be free and clear of grease. This way, if I do have any leaks, I can easily tell. Once again, you guys have an awesome day, a blessed week. I'll catch you on the next video. Oh,